Um, could you please uh, tell us what kind of message, what you are doing here today, what kind of message would you send by doing this to world leaders? And also can I ask you, um, do you think it's about time that um, uh, President Trump would respond to what you have uh, said today? Um, I think, I'm sorry, what was the first question? <laughs> What's the message you would like to yeah. send to our leaders yeah. by doing what you are doing? I think what we want to send is, the message we want to send is to say that we have had enough. And uh, anyone else wants to ask another question? I can't speak on behalf of everyone. Anyone wants to answer about the message to world leaders? I think maybe you should give some questions to the others as well. Greetings, pilots and passengers. Hope you all doing well today. Today I have something to share with you that's quite interesting. I got sent this. It's an interesting article about Greta Thunberg and who she's actually related to. This article is from Blog Factory and it is titled that Greta Thunberg's great-grandfather turns out to be the inventor of the greenhouse effect and population reduction through eugenics. If you're not aware, Greta Thunberg is a young activist. She's a climate change and environmental activist. I think it was a f couple years back or so, she th rose to fame and popularity through being so young and protesting by not going to school and protesting for climate change and people to pay attention to it. And she's become basically a celebrity as a result. Um, Everyone knows who she is. She has spoken at events. She has been on the front of Time magazine. There's been times when it's been outed that actually she's just a puppet of sorts and she's only she gets told what to post on social media, for example. In my opinion, I think that, you know, she's just a tool of the elite. She's been put there. Her parents have sold her out, basically, and she get, has to do all this sort of stuff. So I think the point and what this article is going to make is it's not like she's nobody. She's somebody. She's related to those who have been very influential and powerful people before. So the article says, if somebody receives so much attention and is the rising star on the world stage, that is usually no coincidence. Also in the case of the Swedish climate and environmental activist, Greta Thunberg, it seems that a proper planning had preceded this. Her mother, Melina Ernman, won the final for the Swedish participation in the Eurovision Song Contest in 2009. So she's already famous uh, so, sorts and known of before Greta Thunberg actually went into being an activist. Which is useful if your daughter looks like you and, has, and later has to become a world star. The secret mo promotion probably already started there. You can answer the question whether Mother Melina can really s sing so well. However, it is much more interesting to study the Thunberg family. You'll find that the subjects CO2, global warming and population reduction are descended from the same family. So it's not like it's new, she's not, it's not like to focus on the environment and CO2 and climate change and all that is anything new for their family line, it's, it's just descended down the family tree I guess. Greta Thunberg was born in 2003 according to Wikipedia, she was a distant second cousin of Svant August Arrhenius. Her father Svant Thunberg, an actor, of course he is in the public eye already as well, is named after Svante Arrhenius. Arrhenius is seen as the first scientist to describe the so-called Arrhenius effect, a natural enhancement of global warming through increasing evaporation of water and carbon dioxide from the sea due to a decrease in reflectivity. He predicted that an increase in the CO2 in the atmosphere caused an increase in temperature on Earth. Of course, this has been debated there's many scientists who have come out and spoken against the climate change theory and of course they have been shunned as a result according to him a doubling of co2 would be correlated with a warming from four to six degrees which was caused by solar heat for two-thirds part and for one third part by co2 maths this has been 
interpreted by researchers like Keeling as a greenhouse effect caused entirely by CO2, so you could say that the subject is rather in the family. So it's not just limited to Greta, it's actually her great-grandfather. Svante Arrhenius was born in Gutvik near Uppsala, one was the son of Svante Gustav and Carolina Thunberg. Arrhenius, it seems that Greta is not a distant cousin, but a direct great-granddaughter. So it seems like Wikipedia is not correct here. Wikipedia does not say that Svante Arrhenius himself married a Thunberg. Her name was Carolina Christina Thunberg. This is evident from still visible search results from Google, but if you click on the link itself, myheritage.com, to be adjusted in relation to what the search result still shows. So screenshot, you search it up. There you go. There seems to be a bit of fiddling with the pedigrees and it seems that the name Thunberg can actually be directly linked to this global warming found at Svante Arrhenius. Also remarkable that Svante probably married in the family from his mother's side. Such an incest is typically something we see with old noble bloodlines. However, if there is fumbling with family trees, then the direct pedigree may not be proven anymore, but the family link is indisputable. So essentially what this article is saying is that Greta's ancestors and the bloodline has been kept pure of sorts or it appears that they've married within the family and they suggest that there is incest going on earlier on within the family to preserve this bloodline and we know that that is the case with for example royalty in the past they believed that they must keep their bloodline pure therefore they would marry each other and um, only breed within the royal family and within royalty and it seems like this is the same sort of case going on here is what this article is saying is that they're trying to keep this bloodline pure of sorts and only marry each other or only reproduce within the bloodline. Svante Arrhenius was involved in eugenics and was a member of the board of the Swedish Society for Racial Hygiene. The website eugenicsarchive.ca states the following about this so uh, it says that Arrhenius involved himself in the eugenics movement by joining the Swedish Society for Racial Hygiene, a group focused on researching and promoting the benefits of controlled reproduction in humans. So essentially focusing on population control and even potentially depopulation. The society was formed in 1909 in an attempt to popularise eugenics and encourage policy changes to promote eugenics. Arrhenius was not only a member, he was on the board for society. The society gave lectures and handed out pro-eugenic pamphlets to the public, but because it was illegal for them to discuss any method of birth control, the group was thought to have limited influence over all, or what is known publicly would be what I would add to that. So here we have Greta's great-grandfather directly involved with eugenics, population control. Discussions of birth control and encouraging people to have less children essentially, families to not have kids at all or you know, have only so many kids, but that wasn't allowed to be discussed in public at that time. But here we see again this focus on population control and I would move like a step forward with it falls in line with the agenda of depopulation, encouraging a decline in population growth. Greta's presumed great-grandfather was therefore a high peak. At around 1900, Disfanta Arrhenius became involved in the founding of the Nobel Institute and the associated Nobel Prizes. In 1901, he was, despite a strong op opposition, elected a member of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences, so he's doing very well for himself. He's very influential. For the rest of his life, he would remain a member of the Nobel Committee of Physics and a de facto member of the Nobel Committee of Chemistry. He used his influential position to arrange Nobel Prizes for his friends. So you see, he has a great deal of influence and is basically helping out his friends and those close to him. Jacobus van Hoff and Wilhelm Ostwald and Theodore Richards and tried to prevent enemies Paul Ehrlich, Walter Nernst, Dmitry Mendeleev from receiving them. He also received a Nobel Prize himself in 1903 and so in fact rewarded himself because he was involved in setting up the institute that awarded the prizes. So he actually basically gave himself an award, a um, bit sad, <laughs> and 
he basically picked and chose who would win Nobel Prizes and who would basically not be able to at all. So it's not really about what you do, it's about who you know and essentially who you are and your connections. It is interesting that in several publications it is discussed that the global warming story is about establishing a world government and population reduction. So in another article, um, the person who wrote this, the publicist Brandon Smith makes it clear that a manifesto from the UN Secretary General from the 90s shows that global warming was invented to frighten the world population and then pe- push through an agenda. In his article, he also conclusively demonstrates that the agenda is also about population reduction, so depopulation. That agenda item can also be traced to Greta's presumed great-grandfather. So if Greta Thunberg blows so high from the tower that we need to listen to more to the science of global warming with CO2, it now appears that this theory comes directly from her very likely great-grandfather and that this same great-grandfather was a scammer who warded himself and his friends Nobel Prizes. That is telling about the way many scientists today are being pushed aside when they criticise the official reading of global warming as a result of CO2. It sounds like Greta's position and what Greta was made to do and her legacy as this climate change activist, environmental activist, was basically planned from the start that this is something that she was going to do this was something that would be natural and normal and it was prepared for her ahead of time and she would fall into it and continue the line of the Thunberg family having their fingers in the pies of climate change and this agenda that is going on it's another case of the people who we see being public figures the people who gain traction and gain a great deal of attention from the press, from you know TV, other forms of media, from government. They're not nobodies, they're actually somebodies. And they are basically permitted to gain a great deal of power. It's been agreed upon that these people will be put in these positions of power for a reason, to push an agenda and to influence the minds of the public. And that is essentially what has happened to Greta. She has been put there on purpose to influence younger people in particular. Because if you're a younger person, you're probably going to relate more to what she's saying rather than someone else who's a lot older than her and, you know, doesn't go to school. But with Greta, why should we listen to someone who is so, so young over all of the other scientists? Why is she being permitted to be on these boards with other scientists discussing and you know, talking with the UN and basically making decisions for the future of of the world, really, and having a part to play in that. Why should we trust someone like that who's not, you know, got anything to prove, not got any research behind them that they've done themselves? Substantial research, not just following along with the narrative, not just going along with this current agenda of climate change and global warming. Because as we know, climate change is just the forefront and this green energy and this whole green world thing that's going on is just a part of a greater agenda linked into everything going on in the world. The C-19, it's linked with that. And the end goal would be to push forward depopulation, you know, reduce the population further, make it so the elites have a greater, tighter power hold over everyone else, public will be easily controlled and of course aim for a one world government and doing pushing this climate change thing and encouraging people to move into communities in one places in the cities move out of you know the countrysides and into urban areas means that it is pushing for a one world government like we've seen with the world economic forum and the great reset it's all a part of that i'm not surprised greta's tied to you know just a long line of people who have been influential and a bloodline that is important significant in some way and is essentially noble blood or or elite blood would be a better one and uh, not surprising in any way really i'm sure many of you probably thought the same but let me know what you think down below in the comments i'd love to hear your thoughts 
If you'd like to support the channel, please subscribe today to fly today and get ready to take flight. Like and share this video with others, your friends, share the word, anyone who's maybe a fan of Greta, see what they have to say about it. If you'd like to support the channel further, you can donate to my coffee page or my PayPal or even my Bitcoin. And links to that will be down below in the description. It's worth checking out my coffee page as there is some exclusive content on there that is only available for supporters of the coffee page, including the unedited video of the fibers found on the face coverings and also some research videos and documents on research sources if you wanted to do your own research, the sources that I use. So do check it out, consider donating, and if you want to join the community and get to know other people, why not join my Discord server too? There's loads of people on there, it's a great community, we're all getting to talk to each other and share information, so come and join us on there, it'd be great to see you there. Thank you for watching the video guys, I hope you'll have a wonderful blessed day wherever you are in the world. Stay true, stay awake and stay blessed. And as always, fly high, fearless. less.